Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I'm Udayan Mukherjee. In the 90s or before the 90s, Indian innerwear was almost a hush-hush kind of industry. All of you would recall that uh, people would go to a shop and out would come some kind of innerwear from a plastic wrapping or a paper wrapping and you would discreetly take your innerwear and go away home, whether you were a man or a woman. But it all changed in the mid 90s when jockey burst onto the Indian scene. And in a sense, they actually put innerwear on display proudly in the process of which they made a huge brand of jockey in India and went on to become, become a billionaire family themselves and created huge wealth for shareholders of Page Industries, which was the company which had the jockey license for India. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the show today the man who actually spearheaded the entry of jockey into India, became a billionaire himself, and uh, of course, made one of India's most successful innerwear brands, which is the stuff of almost legend today. Sundar Ashok Kenomal, uh, the managing director of Page Industries is with me today. Sundar, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the show today because you are in a sense, not just the managing director of Page Industries, uh, but, um, but the man who actually took Indian innerwear out of the closet. Uh, uh, would you say that's a fair way to describe you? I, I think I couldn't have said it better myself, uh, the way you, in your introduction, the way you talked about how we started, what the market was like before we actually came in. Uh, you, you've said it very well, and thank you. Thank you for that introduction, uh, Uday. I started by speaking about the remarkable success that you've made of Page Industries in India, but you owe it to that twist of fate in the mid-90s. Had it not been for that moment where Jockey asked you to be the licensee for, in India, you would not have gone on to build this huge empire. I mean, you would have been in Philippines, been very successful, but do you sometimes look back and say, what an extraordinary twist of fate it was in your career? Uh, Uday, uh, you know, that twist of fate, and blessings, I, I don't know what it is. I must have done something right in my last life because this whole journey, starting from that twist of faith, you know, ev everything has just fallen into place for me from, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, the smoothness in which the, the business has taken off, uh, coming, you know, uh, fr from, from a, a person who's never lived in India, never done business there, uh, the kind of people that I had joining me, that, that, that's been, uh, you know, some, somebody up there has been very kind to me. But you know, that's right. Uh, had it not been for, uh, you know, the then president uh, uh, of Jockey International during one of his visits to the Philippines, inviting us <laughs> to take on the license, uh, yeah, we would not have been here. We were very happy with what we were doing there. But I remember him saying, you know, I think you guys should take up the license for India because one day you will become the, jo the largest jockey licensee in the world. And we actually crossed that milestone in 2010. Mm. But when you look back, what do you think made you such a big success? Were you, as I described, because you just took, you were the first to take innerwear out of the closet and put it on a holding, put it on a shop front, or was it quality? What do you think was the secret ingredient uh, which made you such a big success to begin with? There was definitely a void in the market. So there was a huge opening, a huge op opportunity for us. You know, this is a business that we really understand well. We, I mean, at that time, we were, we were in the business for 34 years uh, because my father took the license uh, for jockey in the Philippines in 1959, uh, 1960. And uh, so there was indeed, uh, you know, a void in the market. Uh, it was ripe for somebody like us to come in and just uh, set the trend and uh, educate consumers on the importance of good quality uh, innerwear. And, you know, when we came, there was virtually, when, when I was doing my research, after we were offered the, uh, the opportunity by Jockey, I found that there was virtually no marketing. It, as you say, it was, it was treated like a commodity the way, you know, the, the, the innerwear was packed. And uh, it, it was really a huge opportunity for us to just do what we were doing there and implement it in India. Uh, of course, uh, there were challenges, you know, I, I'm not gonna say that it was uh, a breeze or a, a walk in the park. Uh, you know, it, it was after all our first venture into 
uh, India. Uh, we've never lived there, as I said. Somebody put it very well when he said, you know, uh, he defined an entrepreneur as somebody who jumps off a cliff and learns how to build an aircraft on the way down. Uh, that's pretty much what we did. And uh, sorry, I have, I have these jets flying overhead because I live next to the old HAL airport. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, uh, what we did, uh, you know, but there were, there were challenges in terms of the manufacturing environment. Uh, we had to uh, kind of like introduce and inculcate our culture in the way things were being done, you know, how supervisors treated the workers, the retail environment, which was very unorganized. And, you know, as you said, the way uh, innerware was being displayed in showcases and and so on. We had to change that whole mentality of the retailer, his mindset on how we wanted our products to be uh, sold. Uh, and obviously distribution was uh, daunting because while we had, you know, we were very confident about producing the best possible products, the best packaging uh, in the back end, manufacturing and so on. We, uh, you know, for, for us, it was daunting on how do we reach our consumers, you know, in this vast and diverse uh, country. And, uh, and lastly, you know, anywhere was a low profile item. Uh, it, it was treated like a commodity. So we had to change that mindset. So all, mindset. So all these things were, were, were there just there for us, you know, for the taking. Hmm.